Okay, 4.3, factoring trinomials that are in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. If you're one of my students, you would have seen us do this with algebra tiles, but algebra tiles are just a visualization of what we'll be doing. Today we're going to do it using pure algebra, the math. Again, my name is Mr. Brash. You can find my YouTube channel right here. Here's my email address, and I am proudly Canadian from Ottawa, Ontario. All right, so a little recall. What we're going to do here is we're going to expand and simplify a binomial times a binomial. We've done this several times previous in the course. So we're going to say x times x is x squared, x times 7, 7x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. Collect our like terms, and what we have is x squared plus 3x minus 28. And let's examine what we've done with these two. Our original equation, or statement I should say, was in factored form. If this was a parabola, my a value would be 1, my zeros would be 4, and negative 7. And what we've done by expanding and simplifying is we've created the standard form. And what standard form tells us is the y-intercept. Standard form has the y-intercept right here and the a value is still 1. And why is this important? Well, what's actually important about today's lesson is going in the reverse direction. In this case, we went from factor to standard, but what if we wanted to go the other way around? What if all I gave you was x squared plus 3x minus 28? And why would we even bother doing that? Let's take a look at a rectangle. The area of any rectangle in the world is length times width. Now, if I told you that the area of this rectangle was this long statement, x squared plus 3x minus 28, and I asked you, what are the dimensions of the rectangle? What are the length and what are the width? At this point in the game, you might have absolutely no idea because you don't know how to factor this trinomial. But what we really want to be able to say is we want to be able to say that we know what the length is and we know what the width is. Now, because this is the same trinomial that I had above, x squared plus 3x minus 28, we have them. I gave them to you at the beginning of the, of, the, of the question. So x minus 4 and x plus 7. So we can say, you know, the length is x minus 4 and the width is x plus 7 or vice versa. And that's going to help us discuss this rectangle. Now, why would you ever have x's in the dimensions of a rectangle? Well, if you wanted to make the rectangle bigger or smaller, the number you put in x will do that. All right, so let's, let's put this into some practice. Now, before we practice this, we're going to play a little game. And this little game is pretty easy to play. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a number, and you're going to have to tell me what two numbers add up to it. So if I give you 7, we're looking for two numbers that sum to 7 or add up to 7. But there's a little bit of a caveat here. The thing is they also have to multiply to 12. So we're looking for two things that add to 7 and multiply to 12. And obviously I picked this one because it's simple. So you have to go through, you know, what two numbers add to 7, 1 and 6. Well, they don't multiply to 12. 2 and 5, they don't multiply to 12. 3 and 4, well, 3 times 4 does multiply to 12. So 3 is our first factor and 4 is our second factor. Let's try it again. I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative 1 but they multiply to negative 30. So we have to find out the numbers that multiply to make negative 30. 1 times 30 is not going to add to 1. 3 times 10, not going to add up to 1. 15 and 2, not going to add up to 1. So what two numbers that multiply to make 30 are 1 away from each other? And the answer is 5 and 6. 5 times 6 is negative 30. And somehow, the difference between 5 and 6 is going to be a negative 1. And we have to ask ourselves, which one of these two is negative? And the answer is the 6. In order to add these to get negative 1, the 6 has to be negative. And let's double check that they multiply to make a negative 30, and they do. So the factors are 5 and negative 6. So let's try it one more time. Two numbers that add to make negative 2, and two numbers that multiply to make negative 8. So you've got to go through the factors again. 1 and 8, no. 2 and 4. Well, let's think about that for a second. 2 and 4 are 2 away from each other. And which one of these needs to be negative? The 4 does. So my factors are 2 
and negative 4. The, the order in which you write that does not matter. You could say negative 4 and 2. One last one, just to make sure we're on the right track here. Two numbers that multiply to make 35 and add to 12. 1 and 35 won't. I can't really think of any, any other factors of 35 other than 5 and 7. And in fact, 5 plus 7 is 12. So if you feel you're pretty good at this game, you're going to have no problem factoring trinomials. Because it's those two steps that you're going to want to use. So let's work a little bit backwards. Here's our expansion from before. And we're going to multiply it out. And I want to show the sum and I want to show the product as I go, as I multiply these out. Now this is not factoring, this is expanding. So here's, here's one product, x times x is x squared x times negative 4 is negative 4x. 3 times x is 3x. Now here's where the real product comes into play. This is the one. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And that's the product right there. 3 times 4. Now why is that the product? That's the product because if we take a look at adding 3 and negative 4, if we add 3 and negative 4, we get negative 1. And that's exactly what happens once we collect our like terms. Negative 4 plus 3, negative 1x. And so what we've got is we've got a product and a sum. Three times negative four, negative twelve. Three plus negative four, negative one. And that's the key to factoring trinomials. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards on those. So we're going to see a trinomial and we're going to try and figure out what two numbers produced the twelve and summed to the one. So here's our first example. Factor the following. x squared plus 11x plus 24. And so what we have is we have our product. 24, so two numbers multiplied to make that number, and we have our sum, 11. Those same two numbers added to make 11. I'm going to show you a couple tricks on how you can do this, set yourself up for success in this kind of scenario. One of these ways is called the box method. Now the box method is fairly new to me, but it makes a lot of sense. If you think about what we've been doing in the past with algebra tiles, or if you're doing the area of a rectangle, if you consider the big box, the rectangle, and the inside box are just pieces of it. We're going to get areas of these four little pieces and add them all up to get the area of the bigger piece. And I'll try and explain what I mean by that. So let's put the x squared in this box and let's put the 24 in this box. And the key is what two numbers multiplied to make 24 but added to make 11. And so what we want to do is across this diagonal here, we want to add to make 11. So we need something x here and something x here that adds to 11x. And those somethings have to multiply to 24. So let's talk about the factors of 24. 1 and 24, they're not going to add to 11. 2 and 12, those aren't going to add to 11. So can you think of anything that multiplies to 24 and adds to 11? Now the answer is 3 and 8. And it doesn't matter which box we write these in. So we've got 3x and 8x. So x squared is made up of an x times an x. And 3x is made up of x times 3. If you think about this has a dimension of x and this has a dimension of 3. 8x is made up of 8 times x and 24 is made up of 8 times 3. And so we can collect these and say that this is x plus 3, this long side right here, this long side right here, that's x plus 3. And this long side going down like this, that's x plus 8. And if 8 was negative, it'd just be x minus 8. And if 3 was negative, same thing there. And so using this box method just helps us collect our, our thoughts. And so the factorization of this is x plus 3 times x plus 8. And you're going to wonder, can I write those backwards? Absolutely. You can say x plus 8 times x plus 3. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, you can't write you know, 3 plus 8 and x plus x. 
So that's one way of doing it. Now, if you don't understand that or you don't like that, that's okay. And I, I'll show you again how to do this a little bit later. There is another method which I find a little simpler. And it's just a matter of scrap paper. So both of these methods would be done on scrap paper. And it's the idea that we're looking for two numbers that sum to 11 and multiply to 24. And instead of going through this process here, we're just going to rhyme off things that multiply to make 24. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. And that's about it. And then you just have to ask yourselves, which ones of these add up to 11? Well, not that one, not that one. Yep, that one does, and not that one. So you've got your two numbers right here right away, the 3 and the 8. And so you can say that that's x plus 3 and x plus 8. Now that's the method that I'm personally more used to. Just scrap paper, list off the factors, away you go. A lot of people like this box method. They get to visualize the area. Let's try another example. Now in this example we're going to go one step further. We've actually got an equation, a quadratic equation, and we're asked what are the zeros in this quadratic equation? Right now this is in standard form so we can't see the zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in factored form because factored form is what shows us the zeros. And in order to do that, well, yes, of course, you guessed it, we have to factor it. So I showed you before the box method. Let's just try the box method one more time with this one. So you draw yourself this little box. You know, some people don't even bother drawing the divisions. And you say, okay, well, x squared is here and 36 is here. So the first number and the last number go here. The middle number, the negative 13, is made up of the two guys that go across the diagonal here. Well, what two numbers multiply to 36? And again, this is, this is multiply to make 36 here. This is very important. If you say add here, there's nothing's going to work. And, but they add to make negative 13. So you still have to go through the factors of 36. You know, 6 and 6, well, that doesn't make 13. 36 and 1, that doesn't make 13. 18 goes into it. 18 goes into it twice, well, that's not going to give me 13. So can we think of two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to a negative 13? 9 and 4 are the two items that will multiply to 36 and add to 13. So 9x and 4x. But we have to be very careful here. They have to add to a negative 13 and multiply to a positive 36. So we know that if two numbers are both positive, they'll multiply to a positive. We also know that if two numbers are negative, they'll both multiply to a positive. So does negative 9 plus negative 4 become negative 13? Yes, it does. So that's good. So we now know that it's x minus 9 and x minus 4. So what are our zeros? The zeros are 9 and 4, or 4 and 9. Is there a way for us to double check our answer? Of course there is. If you were to expand this back out, you might want to let the person know that you're just checking your answer. You will get the original statement, or at least you should, if you did it correctly. So we'll collect our like terms. And in fact, we have the same statement we started with. So my factorization is correct and my zeros are correct. Example 3. What are the zeros in this quadratic? So this time, let's use the other method that I tried to show you. So once again, we're going to factor it. So we know that we should end up with some sort of factorization of it. And the key here is that a is 1. All of our factorizations in this lesson, a is 1. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 72, but add to negative 1. So we're going to rhyme off the factors of 72. 1 and 72, no way. 2 and 36, nope. Can 3 go into 72? You're going to have to ask yourself, is that possible? And yes, the answer is 24. Nope, that doesn't add up to negative 1. What other options do we have? We've got 8 and 9. Oh, hello. 8 and 9 are one away from each other. So it really does look like this is the possible answer. Now, which one of these needs to be negative such that they multiply to negative 72, 
but they add to negative 1. And the answer is the negative has to be on the 9. The key is when you're trying to add them. That's how you're really going to know. So my factors are x plus 8 and x minus 9. And so my zeros are negative 8 and 9. Or you could write negative 8, 0 and 9, 0. All right, example 4. What are the zeros in this quadratic? All right, we're going to factor this one as well. And you can use whatever method you want. One last reminder. The key is that you're looking for two numbers that multiply to make the last item and add to make the middle item. Let's go over the factors of 6 that might add to make 1. So 1 times 6, no. 2 times 3, no. They don't add up to 1. You, you may have been screaming that it's 2 times 3, but if I add 2 and 3, I get 5, not 1. So you're telling me, OK, subtract. What if it's negative 2? Well, negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6. And this is not a negative 6, it's a positive 6. So if you've run out of factors and none of them work, it's not factorable. So we, we just plainly say that this is not factorable. Now, that doesn't mean that there are no zeros. It's possible that it means there's no zeros. But what we have is we have no whole number zeros. So the zeros are not whole numbers. And at this point in our mathematical career, we don't know what they are. We could use guess and check, all sorts of kind of other things. But we're going to get to that later on. You use something called the quadratic equation, but we're not there yet. So you just simply say that it's not factorable. All right. In this case, we're not asked what the zeros are. We're just asked to factor fully. And the reason why I put this example here is you're going to see scenarios where you're asked to factor it fully. And you really have to keep in mind that it does say that word. It's a hint. It's a hint that you're going to have to do factoring more than once. So we take a look at this trinomial. This trinomial is not in your typical x squared or something squared plus x plus c or, or whatever. This has a cube on it. And not only that, a is not 1. a is 3. So we can't use product and sum. And that's what we've been using. That's what it's been called. We can't just find out what adds to 21 and multiplies to 24. It's not going to work. But what previous skill do we have that does work? Well, a previous skill we have is common factoring, greatest common factor, GCF. So what do all three of these have in common? They're all divisible by 3, and they all have at least a single y. So I'm going to divide out 3y. When I divide out 3y in the first term, I get y squared. In the second term, I get negative 7y. In the third term, 24 divided by 3 is 8. y divided by y is 1. And so I end up with this 3y in front of this trinomial. And what's really interesting is that this trinomial is factorable. Or at least it might be. And that's why it says factor fully. The hint is you're probably going to have to factor a second time. So let's see if it's factorable. What two numbers multiply to make negative 8 and add to make negative 7? What about 1 times 8? Absolutely. If the 8 is negative, they will add up to negative 7, and they will multiply to negative 8. So the factors are positive 1 and negative 8. And so now we've factored it fully. We have three factors, this, this, and this. And that's it. That's it for factoring trinomials. One of the key important inf pieces of information here is that a has to be equal to 1 to do what we did today. And if you're wondering what this is called, this is called product and sum. And I showed you two different ways. One is called the box method. You draw out your box, and you put x squared here. You put c here, and then you're finding out what adds up to b. 
And the other is doesn't really have a name. It's just scrap work where you find out, you know, what adds to a specific number and multiplies to a final number. And some people do these backwards. They'll they'll put the multiplication number up top, and then they'll put you know the addition on the side. It doesn't matter. Just you're all you're doing is you're rhyming off factors and finding out which one works. So whatever you need to do on scrap paper, uh, it's going to be your best friend for factoring. Thanks for watching. Uh, take a look at some of my other videos, and email me if you have any questions or see me in class.